The main components that control an aircraft's movement are the primary flight controls. You're soaring through the sky, the world beneath you. Now how do you think you're able to maneuver this massive machine with such precision? Well, it all comes down to three primary flight controls. They are the ailerons, the elevators, and the rudder. Each of these controls is responsible for a unique aspect of flight and works in harmony with the others, ensuring a smooth and safe journey. Let's start with the ailerons. These are hinged surfaces located on the wings of the aircraft. When you move the control wheel or stick to the left or right, the ailerons move in opposite directions. This causes the aircraft to roll or tilt to the side, allowing you to turn the aircraft. Now let's move to the elevators. Positioned on the tail of the aircraft, the elevators control the pitch of the plane. If you pull the control wheel or stick back, the elevators rise, causing the aircraft's nose to point upwards. Conversely, if you push the control wheel or stick forward, the elevators lower, and the aircraft's nose points downwards. Lastly, we have the rudder. This is a hinged surface on the vertical part of the tail. Using the rudder pedals, you can make the aircraft yaw or turn left or right without tilting the wings. When you press the left rudder pedal, the aircraft yaws to the left and vice versa. Together, these controls enable the pilot to manipulate the aircraft's attitude and direction. They allow the pilot to roll, pitch, and yaw the aircraft, adjusting its path through the sky. Each control is crucial and when used in conjunction, they offer the pilot a remarkable level of control over this incredible machine. Now you're probably wondering, these controls are great for steering, but what about the power that propels the aircraft? How do we manage that? That's where the throttle control comes into play. We're now going to delve into the heart of the aircraft's power and speed management, the throttle control. You see, the throttle is the gateway to the engine's power. It's like the gas pedal in your car, but with a lot more responsibility. When you push the throttle lever forward, you're opening the gate, allowing more fuel to flow to the engine, resulting in increased power and speed. But it's not just about going faster. The throttle also plays a crucial role in gaining or losing altitude. Here's the magic. When you need to climb, you increase the throttle, giving the engine more power to lift the aircraft. When you need to descend, you ease back on the throttle, reducing the engine's power and allowing the plane to gently glide down. But remember, every action in the cockpit is about balance. You can't just slam the throttle forward and expect to rocket into the sky. It's a delicate dance of power and control, and the throttle is your dance partner. Don't forget about airspeed too. A higher throttle setting will increase your airspeed, but be careful not to exceed the plane's safe operating limits. You're in control, but the plane has its limits. Now that we've got the plane moving, how do we navigate? Navigating an aircraft relies heavily on a set of key instruments. Now let's delve into the world of aviation navigation instruments, the tools that help pilots steer their course through the skies. First up, the altimeter. This remarkable device measures the aircraft's height above sea level. It operates based on atmospheric pressure, which decreases as we ascend and increases as we descend. The altimeter translates these pressure changes into feet, giving pilots a clear picture of their altitude. Remember, altitude isn't just a number. It's an essential aspect of safe and efficient flight. Next on our instrument panel, we have the heading indicator, also known as the directional gyro. This tool provides pilots with their aircraft's direction relative to magnetic north. Unlike a standard compass, the heading indicator isn't subject to errors caused by the aircraft's pitch and bank. It's an indispensable guide, especially when visibility is poor. Let's not forget the Global Positioning System, or GPS for short. In the modern era of aviation, GPS has become a crucial navigation tool. It uses signals from satellites orbiting the Earth to pinpoint the aircraft's exact location. With GPS, pilots can navigate with precision, even over vast, featureless terrains or during the darkest nights. These instruments work in harmony, guiding pilots through every phase of their journey from takeoff to landing. The altimeter ensures we're flying at the right height, the heading indicator keeps us on the right path, and the GPS tells us precisely where we are. But it's not just about knowing how to read these instruments. Pilots must also understand how to interpret the data they provide and how to react accordingly. It's a delicate dance of numbers and needles, of altitude and attitude, of course, and speed. It's important to note that these instruments are not infallible. They can malfunction or give incorrect readings. That's why pilots also learn traditional navigation methods like dead reckoning and pilotage to complement their instrument skills. 
Our course is set, our speed is controlled, but what happens during unexpected events? Let's explore that in the next scene. No flight is immune to unexpected events, which is why understanding the plane's emergency systems is crucial. In the throes of uncertainty, the autopilot system serves as an essential safety feature. This system is designed to manage the aircraft's trajectory, allowing the pilot to focus on resolving the underlying issue or contacting air traffic control for assistance. It's a bit like having an extra pair of hands on deck when things start to get a little choppy. Next up is the emergency descent mode. Now, this isn't something you'd want to use on a sunny day. Think of it as your parachute when you're in a pinch. When activated, this system guides the aircraft to a safer, lower altitude, typically around 10,000 feet. It's a safety net designed to protect you and your passengers when rapid descent is necessary. Last but certainly not least, we have the emergency location transmitter. This device, often abbreviated as ELT, is the unsung hero of the aviation world. In the event of a crash, the ELT sends out a distress signal, allowing search and rescue teams to locate the aircraft quickly. It's a small device that makes a big difference when every second counts. These systems are not just bells and whistles, they are lifelines in the sky. Each plays a vital role in maintaining safety during flight, ensuring that even when things don't go as planned, there's always a backup plan. Being prepared for emergencies is a key aspect of being a pilot. Flying a plane involves a deep understanding and management of various controls and systems. It's a dance of precision, a ballet of technology and human skill.